for that. So uh, uh, this is work done with Aritha, who is a student uh, at IIC. Uh, so I, I need to give you some background uh, about, uh, about this, a little bit mathematical background, uh, before I get to the physics motivation. So roughly speaking, you can have in mind that there is this symmetry. Uh, it's, called, uh, dis it's a discrete symmetry, M24. It's a, it's a huge order. I mean, it's 10 to the 8 uh, elements, basically. Uh, uh, it's a huge order symmetry. And somehow that symmetry uh, uh, helps us to write down uh, degeneracy formulas uh, for certain black holes. Uh, so I hope to convince you that uh, symmetry was useful in, in that as aspect. So uh, we need some mathematical background. Uh, and uh, one important uh, mathematical background is something called the elliptic genus K3. It's basically a partition function. It's a weighted partition function with some chemical potential for the fermion number. So it's, uh, K3 is basically, think of it as a conformal field theory uh, with, uh, with uh, 4, 4 supersymmetry. Uh, and uh, it has central charge 6. Uh, and on the left uh, side, actually, uh, actually is, on the left side, you weight it uh, with is a pointer. Yeah. So uh, weight it with the fermion number, uh, calculate its uh, weight, uh, its dimensions. And if you evaluate this trace in the Ramon-Ramon sector, uh, that's known as the elliptic genus. Okay, and uh, it's holomorphic uh, in uh, tau and z because the right movers only the ground state counted, and that's what it turns out to be holomorphic. And here's the elliptic genus. Uh, it's basically all the theta functions uh, except theta one, which uh, uh, it's all the theta functions squared. Uh, this is the and a simple model to keep in mind of the K3 is basically uh, four torus. Uh, modded out with this uh, Z2 action. Okay, this is a simple example. In fact, you can do this uh, in terms of this free optical. You can calculate this uh, uh, trace, and you will wind up getting this answer. Uh, and another important fact about the K3 is the Hodge diamond of the K3. Uh, here, uh, these are the, of the Hodge numbers. These are the left holomorphic, right holomorphic Hodge numbers. And uh, this number, H11, is two. If you sum all that, it, you get the Euler character, which is 24. <clears throat> and what is the connection with uh, this Matteo group, M, uh, discrete symmetry group, M24? Uh, it, it was seen, of course, in the elliptic genus. And to see that, you have to rewrite the elliptic genus in terms of the characters of the n equals 4 superconformal algebra. I mean, you don't need to, I mean, I will define this so that you can just think of it as an algebraic idea. Uh, so here's the elliptic genus. And what you have to rewrite it is basically into, uh, into characters of this kind. Okay. Uh, this is the short representation of the n equals 4 superconformal algebra, and this is the long. And uh, this is the way the, it is rewritten. Okay. So there is this short part, and then there is this long part. But this long part uh, you know, uh, is basically weights over the vacuum. I mean, it has weights over the vacuum, this n plus quarter. Uh, and, uh, and the long part. Uh, is basically, uh, you know, weight, I mean, summed with some coefficients a n. Okay. And this a n, apart from the first uh, term, uh, was uh, noticed uh, to have a pattern. And the pattern uh, which it was noticed is that, you know, they are basically mentioned of, uh, irreducible representations of this group, M24, uh, uh, you know, basically trace of the identity, that, that is the dimension of the representation, over, uh, you know, various representations. Uh, there is a grading of the dimension of the size of the representation. And as you go higher, higher up in the L0 level, uh, in the N level, uh, you'll have to uh, see bigger and bigger representations. And uh, somehow these numbers uh, had to do with representations of M24. So this was noticed uh, by this uh, Eguchi uh, Oguri and Chachikawa. And uh, yeah. on the right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, maybe I got it uh, flipped, but I mean, yeah. uh, so this is the, uh, uh, so, uh, uh, so this is the pattern they noticed, okay, that the elliptic genus can be decomposed in this uh, fashion. Now, uh, now, there are other things one needs to know a little bit more. Uh, the, there are certain quotients of this K3, uh, uh, in which, uh, uh, you know, the ZN quotients, I think technically they're called an equivalence quotients. Uh, so these quotients, uh, basically, what it does is reduces the Hodge number. So, for instance, this is the original one, 20, uh, and there is this Z2 quotient which reduces it uh, to 12. Basically, the H11 Hodge number, the middle Hodge number, is cut down. The rest is kept uh, intact. The middle number is uh, cut down. It sort of goes. So, these are the single-digit primes. Huh? In fact, this formula works for primes. Okay. 
so you put in the prime, you'll get an integer again. And uh, so this quotient basically cuts this Hodge uh, diamond, uh, you know, in the size. So there are these quotients. Uh, and uh, the, just yeah. So they, they didn't act on the uh, yeah, yeah, so, uh, yeah, so explicitly uh, it is known for some cases. For instance, if you construct the K3 out of the Z2 realization, uh, this Zn, this added Zn, uh, basically shifts on one of the circles. It shifts on one of the circles. Uh, so uh, one of the circles of the T4. So uh, uh, so there is this uh, thing. I mean, uh, this realization is not easy to come by, actually. I mean, uh, for Z3, there is a real, another realization, actually. So there you have to realize the K3 in terms of some uh, SU2, uh, SU, SU3 uh, lattice, and then uh, find a symmetry. But just take the size uh, of, the of the circle, of the circle. I mean, it. So it takes it one, one length. Yeah, one. Yeah, it's it sort of all shifts. One. Yeah, all, all uh, it shifts in one of them. <laughs> so you can uh, you and you can uh, just this obviously realizing you can recompute. You can recompute the elliptic genus. Uh, and in fact, for such quotient, suppose there is this quotient, uh, this quotient, you can, I mean, if it's a quotient of a conformal field theory, you can con uh, compute basically the insertions of that action. Uh, or the, and to, towards uh, also the twisted sectors. So there are uh, these kind of, it's called a twisted elliptic genus, basically twisted by that action uh, and uh, together with the insertion. And that also admits an expansion of this kind. And this uh, twisted elliptic genus constructed for uh, all these prime quotients okay. earlier on. There was a motivation for constructing them, but it was constructed earlier. Okay. Uh, just, if I'm yeah. very naive, it would seem uh, if the T is there just yeah. Just reducing the size of the circle that hasn't changed any. No, it doesn't. Uh, actually, OK, the way it is, uh, the full way it is acted is basically uh, you have to sort of, uh, I mean, uh, you know, there is another, t I mean, the way we com computed it is there is another circle. OK, there's another circle. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's it's a shift of both the circles. There's an extra auxiliary circle, which you have to consider. Has to do with the twisted sector? Twi yeah, it has to do with the twisted Thanks. sector. So in fact, here is a formula for n equals 2. It basically keeps these. It keeps, I mean, OK, if there are three factors. It keeps, uh, you know, it keeps, so the twisted sectors for the Z2 orbifold keeps these uh, 1, 2, 3. I mean, it keeps these separate ones. OK. Uh, so there is these uh, quotients, and, uh, you know, and we have constructed it for these cases. OK. Now, uh, now, you know, how does this M24, uh, how, what is this M24? The M24 symmetry was seen without the quotient first. But in these quotient cases, uh, so there is a notion of uh, twining character. Okay? Twining character is basically the F01, just F01. And if you decompose that F01 exactly like the way you decomposed it, uh, you decomposed uh, uh, the, you know, the full, uh, the unorbifolded K3, uh, here is this decomposition. And now read out these coefficients. Read out these coefficients in this decomposition. Okay. Uh, so there are some numbers like this. You can rewrite that. So is yeah. Zero one is twisting in time. Or no, no. It's just uh, insertion. Yeah, just the insertion. Yeah. Uh, huh? F zero one is uh, F zero one. Yeah. The way it, this is R and this is S. So, so one the, is in one circle. The other is in the other circle. Uh, this one. Uh, well, this is the twisted twisted circle. So when you just go go around and then you uh, have to twist. This is just insertion of the operator. So that's in the space, I suppose. I mean, I don't know. I mean, uh, yeah, no, I mean yeah. insertion, insertion, time. insertion is the time. Okay, insertion is yeah, insertion is the time because uh, because you evolve it and then yeah, then. Yeah. Uh, so uh, so you look at f zero one. F zero one. Uh, where is it? So F01 is like telling on chemical potential. Yeah, yeah, F01 is like that. So in fact, F01, again, you try to re do the same thing. You try to rewrite it in terms of this, uh, you know, characters, OK? And you try to read out these numbers, OK? And there will be some numbers. And uh, what has this got to do with the M24? And that has been noticed. Uh, and that basically uh, are certain coefficients. Uh, called the McKay Thompson series. Okay. Uh, so basically, uh, j when you didn't have orbifold, you had traces of the identity. Here, you have traces of certain element. Okay. Uh, in fact, because it's a trace, it's a conjugacy class. It's, uh, it has to do, deal with the conjugacy class of the M24. So it is invariant under that. So it's basically, uh, it, 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 it sort of picks out sensitive only to the conjugacy class. And uh, taking traces uh, over representations 
of uh, this particular conjugate class. There is something called a 2A conjugacy class. You can get these numbers. You can get these numbers for the twining character. This is conjugacy class of this uh, This uh, discrete group. Okay. Uh, uh, so, of course, uh, 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 they are labeled by 2A. I mean, this is a 2A element. The Z2 action corresponds to one particular conjugacy class. So there is the Z2 action. So I, I said there are like at least two, three, five, seven actions. Okay. So the Z2 action corresponds to one particular uh, conjugacy class. This n is basically the size of the representation. You can think of them as sizes of the representations over which you take the trace over. Okay. Uh, uh, so uh, that that are those numbers. Can you explain yeah. how the G prime is different than the n? The G prime. The one with the slide will be both. Ah, this one. This is G prime. So the last line. Ah. Okay. So uh, okay. So they, 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 they are these, and this was noticed uh, by these authors uh, earlier on. And in fact, uh, uh, in fact, uh, for all these cl classes, uh, you know, the ones which we constructed, which is uh, the full twisted elliptic genus uh, earlier on, uh, they are associated one to one with a conjugacy class called PA. I mean, there, there, is a, there is a labeling of the conjugacy classes. Uh, it's associated with PA. P is the prime number, OK? 2, 3, 5, 7, OK? But it's known that M24 admits 26 cl uh, conjugacy classes, OK? So this is just 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 of them, OK? And uh, this is a, I mean, you don't need to know uh, much of it. But I mean, I, I'll just say that there are these 26 cl conjugacy classes. Okay, uh, and uh, here uh, they are listed in some particular way. These are the primes, uh, these are composites, okay, uh, and there are like two classes. One, uh, you know, you'll see the reason why I'm calling it two classes. Uh, later, one is embedded in M23 and the other one is out, okay. Uh, so, uh, this is the second type. So, there are 26 conjugacy classes. Each, uh, there is a cycle structure to label them, uh, and there's a shape of the cycle and so on, uh, but there are 26 of them, okay. Uh, and uh, and this uh, McKay Thompson series associated with each of them. Uh, there is a McKay Thompson series associated with each of them. There are these ANs basically, and one can work backwards. Uh, so using the AN inputs, you can reconstruct F01. Okay, and that's what these guys did. Okay, so they reconstructed F01 uh, for uh, you know for each of these 26 classes. And you can write them in closed form, and uh, these were constructed by these guys. Okay, uh, so uh, there. You know, but though you have only the twining character, but in principle, I mean, you know, uh, that's what we will try to do. Uh, that uh, given the given the twining character, so uh, you know, uh, because it can be re uh, reconstructed from those information, uh, can we find the full elliptic genus for these quotients? So, in principle, there exist these 26 quotients of K3, which is associated with uh, 24, uh, and you know, we would like to uh, construct the you know the full elliptic genus for them. Okay. Uh, so, given this uh, F01 for the 26 one, we did only four. Uh, uh, so, can we construct the full, uh, uh, all the elements of the twisted LP genus for each of these 26 classes? And uh, so, how do we go about doing that? Uh, so, basically, we use these modular transformations. Okay, so here's uh, this modular transformations are very natural transformation when you think of them as CFT. Uh, so, this is a modular transformation uh, obeyed by the elliptic genus. Okay, and uh, and this particular, uh, you know, there is a relation uh, between this RS, or uh, some uh, twisted sector, towards some other transformed twisted sector in this manner. Okay. For instance, uh, if you substitute ABCD for like the S transformation, the 0, 1 sector, which is basically the twining character, okay, is related to the 1, 0 twisted sector. But this relation, uh, you know, if you see this relation, you'll see that the 1, 0 is obtained at you know, uh, uh, minus 1 by tau and z by tau. So it's uh, obtained at minus 1 by tau and uh, z by tau. Uh, so, uh, so this is the uh, method. Like, you take 0, 1 sector and somehow use modular transformation and try to reconstruct the full uh, elliptic genus. Now, there are two technical obstacles uh, in doing this. Okay? So for practical purpose, we just don't want this relation. Uh, of course, we want the, you know, we require the Fourier expansion in terms of not 1 by tau, but uh, you know, uh, in terms of the usual Fourier expansion. For Fourier, for practical purposes, we would uh, require this. Okay? Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, what I understood was that there were some uh, small finite number of ZH transformations yes. whose trace yes. was identified with the trace of some conjugacy. Yes, yes. Then, uh, then I understood that there were more elements in the conjugacy class. There are more conjugacy classes. So I thought you would have to identify new symmetry operations on the on the elliptic okay. genes. Right. That doesn't seem to be yeah, yeah. So what they did was they artificially constructed. I mean, they constructed given those, uh, you know, given the fact that ANs, you can write down ANs because you know, you know the representations of M24 in the various conjug conjugacy classes. Yeah. So you and know, you take the, you know you, the trace in those conjugacy. Yeah, yeah. And you know the ANs. ANs are the coefficients. Uh, the yeah. So you know the characters, right? Okay. Uh, uh, and then you, you write down this formula for a few expansions. Uh -huh. And then, uh, you know, uh, uh, you can, uh, like, okay, you have to know special properties of the model of functions and so on. And then you guess the F01 fully. So, so yeah. you don't know what the symmetry operation Yeah, you don't know what the symmetry is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. twisted by that operation. Yeah, operation. Yeah, yeah. So you, you just guess it, yeah. So that's what they did. Uh, in fact, these guys did that. So, but they gave the twining character, F01, actually. Uh -huh. Yeah, so yeah. The yeah. Modified ZN. ZN. So, uh, so somehow this M24, yeah. this ZN is uh, acting on the M24 characters in some way. Uh, ZN? Uh, in, in well, the, ZN is, uh, yeah, it's a cyclic group, this uh, conjugacy class, uh, the G, the I'm, G. I'm just saying uh, N does not figure <coughs> in which character N? formula, the so ZN of the N of the ZN. The capital N. Capital N. N only runs over a small yeah. finite number of values. Yeah, yeah. And with each of these values, yeah. you say it is one conjugacy class of. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can raise to the power uh, to some. So uh, for two, it's something. For yeah, three, three something. something, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What is this called? Uh, I don't know. This is called Atlas labeling of M24. I don't know why, uh, but yeah. It seems to be the same label as the ocean. Yeah, I used it. I put, uh, initially, it was not known. When we wrote down the uh, elliptic genus, we didn't know this, uh, of course. But later on, when they found the connection with uh, with M24, they identified these were the PAs, actually. Yeah. Uh, For some reason, the mathematicians call it P. The P is same as the Z. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't, yeah. This one? This one. Yeah. This is for Z2. Uh, yeah. This is for Z2. Yeah, 2A. This is for C2. But there are similar expansions for. Uh, I mean, I saw that this conjugacy yeah. class has all cycles of length. Yeah, yeah. So because uh, if you uh, if you raise it one more time, it becomes. Yeah, yeah. That was for the unobi folded case. So, uh, <coughs> this is this is where trace of identity is done, uh, and the other one is where trace of some G prime over the uh, G prime uh, corresponding to some conjugacy class. Where is that? Ah, uh, a particular conjugacy class 2A. Done. So that conjugacy class is yeah. fixed by the choice of the uh, prime number vector. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, you notice that, uh, you notice that it is associated with that particular conjugacy class. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but, uh, okay, later, of course, they generalized. I mean, this was a generalization. Uh, and uh, so given this twining character, okay, uh, so we want to construct a complete uh, twisted elliptic genus. And uh, so that, uh, you know, we do using basically modular transformations. Okay? We do using modular transformations. And, uh, uh, and in fact, for modular transformations to be practically useful, uh, you see that this is like, you know, minus one by tau, but we want a Q expansion. Uh, and so we need identities involving modular forms uh, to obtain this, uh, you know, the complete uh, thing. And, uh, you know, uh, the samples of identities which we derived are such kind, I mean, you know. Uh, this is a particular modular form. Uh, this is like one by tau, okay, and you can relate them like this. Here's another one. Uh, you know, these are the sample of, uh, identities one had to derive to construct this, uh, you know. From F01, you have to go to the, uh, the other ones. This is for all the other ones. We want to do all the 26 classes. Okay. Uh, so just not just the PA. Yeah. 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 So all of the cycles, all of the, all of the, all of the, P, Q cycles, but we and Q are Well, uh, so, okay, so let's see. Trace. So suppose there is one, some action. So the action, okay? So you'll have to uh, you use the same thing, e to the power of 2 pi L naught and so forth. 
is g to the r and g to the s. So this is twisted, and this is with the insertions, OK? Trace, uh, OK, so this is f, r, s. Oh, oh r. This is labeled by s and Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and the twining character is f, 0, 1, which, which has just the insertion. So specific contingency class of the, the Matthew group, yeah. trying to identify the the new and new n. Yeah, no, yeah. So or new n is of course once once you have f zero one, you roughly know what is new n because uh -huh. you by like looking at the structure, uh, you know how much n is there, uh, you know to come back and all you can find out actually the order you can find out. Huh? But uh, give, the, what what is known is just f zero one, and then you have to reconstruct. You have to reconstruct. Uh, so. Uh, so, uh, so there are some identities. I mean, you know, for technically you have to find these identities to reconstruct it. Uh, there is further a technical obstacle for the cases when you know the order is not prime. Okay, uh, uh, if the you know, let's look at this class. Uh, you see, you see from here on, the order is not prime. Okay, uh, uh, order is not prime. When you do these modular transformations, you will never be able to. There are some suborbits. Uh, suborbits in the FRS, the RS, which you cannot access just by modular transformations. Uh, so there are suborbits. Uh, yeah, here, for instance, for the class 4B, which has order 4, uh, this, uh, the, these following sectors, you, you know, form a sub, and they cannot be related from uh, using F01 by the modular transformation. Okay. Uh, so for that, actually, we look at, uh, you know, if you look at the cycle shape of the, uh, of the M24 and then look at the G squared action, uh, from that cycle shape, we can actually find those, uh, we, we can fix those twisted elliptic genus. Okay. Yes, yeah. So, in the form of the case in FRS, some character. FRS? Like, ah, that, okay, I will tell you that thing. Yeah, I will tell you the, uh, that particular uh, approach uh, soon. Uh, that was what was done by Matthias and all. But they get a, just a Q expansion, uh, you know, by systematic way, they get a Q expansion. But we get closed form expressions using this. Uh, limited, but in many of the cases, we get closed form expressions. Okay. So using this fact that uh, such, uh, this, even in the suborbits, there is some M24. Uh, cycle structure, we can fix those uh, twisted elliptic genus there. And, uh, and for, the, uh, uh, for certain cases, even that method doesn't work. But there is another uh, method, like, you know, you have to cer certain symmetries were noticed by these people. And using that, we fix uh, another class, 2B and 3B. Okay. So, but uh, I'll tell you uh, that, I mean, using various, uh, uh, using these three approaches, basically we fix closed form expressions for all the classes in the table one I've given you, and the first two classes of uh, uh, table two. And in fact, they are closed form expressions, uh, not Q expansions as it was known earlier, uh, but closed form expressions. Okay, uh, and, uh, and using that, we can evaluate Hodge numbers for these, these uh, composite objects, okay? And we can actually identify what were known to be CHL obifolds earlier, okay? So a class which was known in string theory earlier, uh, was identified uh, here in this way. So, uh, so uh, let me just actually summarize this part, okay? By saying that uh, using modular transformations and some symmetry properties, we fix the twisted elliptic genus completely uh, from here to here, and the first two classes of these two. Okay. Uh, but I think Matthias and group have the full thing, but in terms of just Q expansion, right? using the method which you sort of say. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, so that's the summary of that part. Now, uh, OK, so this is, uh, 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 yeah, so let me just uh, uh, just sort of say some qualitative things about it. So uh, first, the twisted elliptic genome was shown to exist and constructed using the symmetry. And many of these are not actually geometric quotients, actually, as, we, uh, as in the other cases we saw, in some of the cases we know. Uh, they are not geometric quotients, OK? In fact, for this class, even the Keller form of K3 is projected out. And uh, these are the sort of non-geometric one. But in one case, there is a CF construction of this, uh, this twisting. Yeah. Using the you can obtain what the Hodge number, H11. I mean, 11 is, suppose you have the 11 to study, so you can read out from the coefficient what is H11. It turns out H11 is 0. So Hodge number H11 equal to 0. Yeah, it, it is equal to 0. Uh, so therefore, I mean, H11, that one, one, one of them is a Hodge number, actually, uh, is the scalar form, so that's gone. Actually, uh, so, 
so there are non-geometric ones, and in fact, there is some explicit constructions of these things, uh, you know, using uh, these Vesuvian models at uh, level one. Okay, but what is the use of all these? I mean, so we had we had some few, uh, you know, single-digit prime ones, but you know, we can construct all of these things. And uh, what's the use of these twisted elliptic genus? And here's the use, which I will uh, show uh, at least. Consider this, uh, uh, you know, compactification 2a or 2b on k3 cross t2, where this Zn quotient acts as this quotient, which which acts uh, some, as a sum action on k3, which gives this twisted elliptic genus together with a one by n shift along the circles of S1. So this is the quotient we are considering. And this compactification preserves n equals 4 supersymmetry. Okay? And, and therefore, we have a whole new class of n equals 4 string vacua. Okay? And this generalizes those vacua which we had studied earlier on, uh, which was only single digit prime quotients. Okay? And each of these vacua uh, admit quarter BPS states. Okay? And uh, these are dions. Uh, they have both electric and magnetic charges. Okay. And for large charges, uh, they do become uh, supersymmetric black hole solutions. And uh, the, the, for these cases, P1, I mean, this is Anwar Bifolded case, and the rest, uh, the generating function of these dions was given by the following expression. In fact, I mean, it's an index. It's a very specific index uh, so of uh, these dions. And it was given by this function. Uh, and uh, this function uh, is basically, so there is electric charge, magnetic charge, and since it has both, it has angular momentum. And these are the, like, you know, uh, the chemical potential corresponding to the electric charge, chemical potential corresponding to the magnetic charge, and this is the angular momentum. Uh, and there is a generating function, which is the inverse of another modular form. Okay. Uh, and uh, doing this integral, uh, you can extract out this degeneracies of these uh, uh, black holes. Yeah, this is the Egusaba generalization of that, uh, which we did uh, for all those uh, two, three, five, seven uh, cases uh, with Ashok earlier, uh, actually. Uh, so, uh, so it's uh, uh, it's that. Uh, but now, now that we have you know a whole set of quotients, uh, we can uh, you know we can. Uh, so there is this definition of the contour. Uh, we can ask uh, you know uh, what is this uh, uh, you know what is this formula. And a whole set of vacua. What's this formula for? Um, is, uh, what is the generalization of this formula for uh, for this particular uh, compactifications for all these general compactifications? And uh, so uh, I didn't tell you what this uh, function, generating function, was. Uh, this generating function was uh, is known to be a Siegel modular form. And what is the input to construct this uh, generating function? The input is this twisted elliptic genus. So here is the R, so it's basically the Fourier expansion of the twisted elliptic genus. Uh, uh, when you like, you know, when you consider this infinite product with these coefficients, these are, you can think of them as generalization of the eta function, uh, but the infinite product has various weights, okay, and uh, these coefficients uh, are read out from the twisted elliptic genus and you can construct the modular form out of that. Uh, v is for uh, so, like splitting into order even. You'll have to be a little, I mean, you have to, there is a split between odd. So when J is even, uh, you have to take the even one. I mean, uh, it's a split of odd. So, uh, uh, so there is this particular, okay, so this was shown for all the A cases, okay. And in fact, uh, there was a counting formula. In fact, we had shown that you can relate it to the, you know, D1, D5 system and uh, obtain a counting. Uh, for this, uh, I mean, show that this is the counting function uh, for these uh, de degeneracies, for these, uh, you know, dions. And uh, they have a particular model of property. Uh, it's a generalization of the SL2 uh, model of property. Okay. And the weight of this model of form, uh, so you see it transforms exactly like the SL2 form, but a little more generally. Okay. Uh, and the weight of this model of form uh, is, also, is also related to the twisted elliptic genus uh, uh, coefficients in this particular manner. And uh, in fact, there has been several, uh, for at least for the PA cases. Uh, uh, okay, uh, so and we'll finish it soon. So, uh, so there have been several detailed tests of this degeneracy formula, and we'll discuss two of them. Uh, one test is the statistical entropy uh, uh, formula. Uh, I mean, comparison of the entropy of, from that you know contour integral I gave uh, versus the entropy uh, you know obtained by Hawking formula plus the wall correction. Uh, now, using just uh, asymptotic analysis of that integral, uh, uh, you know, you get this particular expression uh, for the entropy. 
this is the Hawking Bekenstein term, and then this is the uh, sort of first correction, uh, first correction to that. Okay, uh, and of course, uh, you know, this agrees with the uh, uh, you know with the thing which you take the effective action of these theories and compute uh, compute the you know Hawking formula of the black hole as well as uh, the first correction using the Wald expression, and you will indeed land up into the same expression. Okay, and notice that there's the information of that modular form. Uh, because k is basically the weight of this modular form. So there is an information in that subleading correction about that uh, modular form. Uh, uh, so now that we have this full n equals 4 vacuum, there are more, much more n equals 4 vacuum, uh, we can check, uh, you know, if the degeneracy is constructed, uh, if the Siegel modular form obey this particular property, uh, that does it capture degeneracies of black hole, and yes, it does. And uh, I have listed out the weights for many of the ones which we constructed. Uh, I will just run through the, you know, the sort of subleading corrections. So there's a set of subleading corrections which, uh, which it has and which can be evaluated. But secondly, there's a much more stringent test, actually. Uh, the stringent test is these, of course, must be integers, which, of course, it passes uh, these coefficients. Uh, but it was also conjectured by Ashok that for single-centered black holes, and due to spherically symmetric, symmetry uh, and regularity of the horizon, actually, uh, the angular momentum is carried only by the zero modes. Okay. And uh, that translates to the fact that for single-centered black holes, this index must be positive. Okay. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, a sufficient condition which ensures that, uh, ensures this property is this particular thing. You take these charges, uh, this particular, uh, you know, uh, domain of charges, and you have to, which ensures that it's single-centered. Uh, so, and you calculate these coefficients, okay, and the Fourier coefficients from the Siegel modular form should be positive, okay. And this is quite a non-trivial condition, actually, for these Fourier uh, inverse of this modular form. And, in fact, uh, for the, just the non-orbifolded cases, for certain classes of charges, it was proved by these guys. But for these orbifolded case, Ashok just, uh, you know, explicit computation of the Fourier coefficient, he listed them out, and uh, he showed that, you know, it is indeed positive. Okay. And uh, since we have constructed explicitly all the twisted elliptic genus, we can evaluate these Fourier coefficients, okay. uh, because there is a formula for the generating function. And, uh, you know, there is the list, and you can see once it gets into the domain, it becomes positive. This is for B, 6A, again, uh, uh, 8A, uh, 11A, uh, 14A, uh, I mean, uh, you can see that it, it has that particular property. Uh, that it's positive, uh, and it's uh, and it's surprising actually because many of them are not geometric, uh, and uh, and also we check the mathematical uh, program against what Ashok had. Uh, Ashok had a list, and we also matched our list. and And it's also interesting to note that uh, these non-geometric orbifolds have also satisfied these positive constraints. So they're indeed good candidates, strong candidates of generating functions for the black hole degeneracy. So other applications I'll just quickly mention that you know you can construct compactifications for the heterotic string on K3 cross T2 with this orbifolding, folding. And these generalized certain compactifications, which are studied in the early days of N equals 2 dualities, which is basically K3 cross T2. And the spectrum and the one-loop effective action for gauge sectors were evaluated in these papers. And right now we are looking at actually the gravitational sector, uh, in particular this particular couplings. And uh, these are like high derivative couplings which we can compute uh, for these compactifications. And and what this uh, moduli uh, dependent function has is basically uh, they are called they are called topological amplitudes and and in fact they contain information of what is known as Gopakumar Wafa invariance and it'll be interesting to find generalization of this uh, invariance for these twisted uh, vectors. Okay, that's.